I'm the vice president of UCNR. We're an advocacy group that we started in Cincinnati um, when we figured out that this uh, thorium stuff is really quite a, quite a big deal. Um, you know, as personal personal story, I'm actually just a mechanical engineer, uh, and I'm actually getting kind of like a double major. I'm doing mechanical engineering and MBA. But uh, nuclear power has been a hobby of mine since about eighth grade. I've been pretty interested in it, um, especially just because it was it was interesting. It was science. You get to learn about the, the fission. So I've, I've kind of read up on it and the, the light water reactors. I'm not going to claim to be an expert at this. But, uh, you know, um, so what, what our group is primarily really responsible for at our school is it's just basically a multidisciplinary group that's trying to kind of promote the lifter on campus. We're trying to get other people because um, we don't have that many nuclear engineers. We do have a pretty nice nuclear program, but we just don't have that many nuclear engineers. But there's a lot of people that are interested in it. There's a lot of mechanical engineers, chemical, you know, civil. It, it's it's going to be a wide field when it does end up, you know, getting there because we got to have mechanical engineers for the thermodynamic cycles. You got to have the electrical engineers for the wiring and the grids, and the civil engineers to help design the buildings and architects. So. It's going to be a big program, and UC's got a lot, of, a lot to offer on that. So basically, we, we do a lot for just kind of trying to talk to people, give presentations, educate, um, and just make people aware of the technology that's out there. Because it seems like, um, and we do follow all the Thorium Energy Alliance objectives. So it's kind of a breakdown of our three main areas that we focus in. And, um, one of them is in the nuclear engineering department at our school. Uh, obviously, it's a recession. All the schools are facing kind of budget cuts and, and tight times with finances. So our school is having a little bit of uh, trouble in, in keeping our program going. Our dean is not in favor of it. Um, I'm guessing it's mostly because it doesn't win grants and we don't have a lot of students enrolled, so they're not seeing a lot of effective return on it. Um, and it would be a great shame to see it canceled, especially on the advent of you know this new power generation technology that could change the way that we consume power for the next thousands of years. So um, then we do some political activi activism. You may have recognized our video from the uh, Citizen Tube thing that we uh, talked to President Obama. Our video did not actually get asked. We were second place in the energy. Um, uh, the first place question was asked, but we, we managed to make it to second place uh, just by garnering a few votes and trying to spread the word around Cincinnati. So um, and then we're thinking about doing some more uh, presentations to some technical audiences, uh, you know, maybe some professors and, and people who have had the experience in this but maybe haven't heard about it, but also try to do more just kind of in general, go out to a library or um, talk to local high school students and see if they can get interested in it, maybe want to join the nuclear program. Um, that's part of the, also the nuclear part as we do some recruitment. So, so far we've given 12 presentations. And um, we're also going to be attending the ANS conference up in, uh, and they're going to give a tour of a current light water reactor plant. Um, and then we're obviously we've got some more uh, plans to pre present to some non-technical audiences to kind of just spread the word. Because I think we figured out that uh, the biggest thing that the lifter really needs is a lot more of the public support. It's not, I mean, there is a lot of the technical work that needs to be done, but I'm guessing that the people, the technical experts that get excited about this are going to really jump on the bandwagon and get on it on their own time or even just on their professional time. But I think in general, the younger generation that's coming up to take the place of a lot of baby boomers and stuff that are retiring from the, the professional workforce has got to be educated on this. They've got to know what, you know, how to support it and where to push and where to pull. So. And yeah, we're thinking about do, trying to start up some uh, mailing campaigns to congressmen and uh, the DOE and, and other important factions within the government to see if they can get interested in if we have enough people sending letters. And so, and then our, our group, uh, the new nuclear engineering program at UC is pretty interesting. We've got a cobalt 60 irradiation pool and 10% of Fermi 1, or Fermi Chicago Pile 1. Um, we actually have some of that stuff, and we have uh, some pretty distinguished nuclear professors that do some work um, either on the side or full time as nuclear. And we've also approached the assistant dean and uh, some of the nuclear engineering faculty about the, the lifter, and they seem interested. Um, to, to the, for the most part, it's been it's been either positive or somewhat indifferent. So it you know maybe that could be just attributed to the fact that they're already tenured and they're not really looking to do too much more new research and they're kind of <laughs> set in their ways. But you know it's uh, it's part of the future is change and sometimes people are scared of it. So 
Um, and then in response, the biggest question that we've gotten is why is this not being done right now? If it's so effective and it's so green and it's just that good, that's the question we get from just common people. It's like, why are we not doing this? That's the biggest question I think that, um, you know, we like you said, you in the first conference, you, you explored the whys of, or, of what the reactor is doing. And now we're gonna look at the, the what's and the how's, right? And I think that this is a, still a big why for a lot of people is why is this not being done? What What is it that we can do to try to help let people know we are trying to do something? I mean, obviously we are, but that that's their question is like, where is this prototype? Why are we not building it? And especially since hearing some of the international reports that other nations are already kind of jumping on the ball and we're lagging behind a little bit. You know, the United States is used to being pretty technically advanced and stuff and it seems like we're slipping a little bit there. So I think that's a, that's a big concern for a lot of people is, is why. So I just kind of wanted to bring that up. There is, um, and there's some other points that, you know, most of, the, most of the response from our generation, the younger generation, the undergraduates and some of the graduate students that we've talked to has been pretty, pretty overwhelmingly positive. Um, a lot of the students, uh, the, re the reaction is positive, but they also want to see some results in a way. They want to make sure that this isn't really like a pipe dream before they kind of jump on the bandwagon in a sense. I mean, they don't, they don't want to try to, to get, into, get involved in this to have it just kind of crash and burn in a sense. Um, so it's kind of that old adage of, you know, put your money where your mouth is and they want to see some, you know, either federal grants or results or, you know, some kind of you know, prototype uh, proof reactor. So, um, and then for just, this is kind of more specific, obviously, it's, it's, this is for lifter research at our, at our university. We were told that we're pretty, pretty much going to need some kind of a younger tenure professor who's kind of eager to do some research who might be involved in, you know, going across universities to try to get something going with that. We're going to need, we're going to obviously need a lot of funding from the government because this is a high risk thing and not many, you know, venture capitalists are going to see the return in 10 years, unfortunately. But, um, and then there's a lot of problems that we've been talking about with the, the regulatory issues. Obviously, um, we're going to need some kind of higher enrichment to start the core is what I've generally been hearing from most people. And um, the, it seems that most of the uh, regulations kind of prohibit that for civilian use. So um, I think some of the ideas we heard with the DOE um, or the Department of Defense, if we could kind of pipeline it that way, deliver it to the military, the restrictions could be a little bit lacks on that and then we might be able to bypass some of it because in order for this to really get off the ground I, I'm hearing timelines of you know five years 15 30 years it's really got to be soon is what is what it sounds like I mean if the power consumption goes the way it's going to go and we want to be able to provide clean and efficient and effective energy to not just the United States but to other countries of the world to lead the energy thing this has got to really turn around in the next five years so um, and uh, then we just need more student enrollment to kind of push the department to uh, change their mind about cutting the nuclear program. So, um, and in general, yeah, we're, we're just trying to basically just educate people, just kind of say, stop, one, stop somebody on the street and say, hey, have you heard of this new technology? It seems like it's gonna be a good idea. What do you think? And then they say, well, it sounds pretty good. And then of course, they'll ask the question of why isn't this being done now? Um, another interesting point here is uh, we talked we talked a little bit with one professor about um, uh, the energy supplier for Cincinnati is Duke Energy. Uh, Ninety percent of the energy that's supplied to Cincinnati is coal, um, and it's cheap, I guess. I mean, that's why they use it, but it's also really dirty. Um, I don't know. You, probably, you guys are probably not too familiar with the geography in the region, but the, from Cincinnati until Dayton, there was this actual big bowl created by the Miami River. And it's uh, pretty, pretty nasty here. I mean, I don't know what the smog index is compared to other cities, but it seems like every time I leave the city and I go somewhere different, the air is a lot cleaner. So it seems like it would be an interesting uh, step if we could possibly partner with an energy program or an energy company in the local area to try to create one of these newer reactors in the area to help with the pollution and just help with the energy costs and stuff like that. So that's uh, basically it. And uh, we want to give special thanks to Robert Steinhaus for sponsoring our flight out here. So.
questions? First of all, I just want to commend you guys so much for what you've done. I think you are doing exactly what needs to be done, and you. This kind of uh, the, the work that you're doing you're at your level, telling people the story and getting it out, it's uh, uh, just what needs to happen. Uh, two points I wanted to address in there. One of them had to do with the use of high enrichment or more pure fizz oil. Um, a lot of people know I, I favor what's called the pure cycle, which is using uh, straight U233. And, and then, but people say, oh, you know, we can't do that. We have to denature it or we have to use lower enrichment. But as soon as you put U-238 in the fuel, you make plutonium. So I kind of go, well, what are you really buying by that? Because you're making some of the stuff that is considered also proliferation risk. So it doesn't really seem like you're getting away from anything. So I think Lifter is going to cause, you know, if it, if it takes off, it's going to cause some serious rethought. You're going to have to go, would I rather have U-233 in a core, in a high radiation field where nobody's going to go after it, or would I rather make a lot more plutonium? And, you know, my opinion is make U-233 a place where it's safe and, and has a lot of resistance to getting out rather than making plutonium and thinking you're safe by going to a denatured cycle. So that I'd say I think there's hope for that. Uh, the other point was uh, Cincinnati. I've been working on a simulation of all the coal and or big coal and nuclear power plants in the country. And I was just amazed all along the uh, Ohio River right around Cincinnati. It's just coal, 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 coal. I mean, it was like it's just really a dirty. string of them. And I thought, wow, I mean, Ohio is such a fantastic place to show what thorium energy yeah. could mean for the future. It's a, it's, it's, we had a, a couple articles that were published in the uh, Columbus Dispatch a few weeks ago, and I just think Ohio has, has such a great story for being uh, the incubator for a lot of this technology. Yeah. So I think you're doing the right thing, you're right in the right place, and, and you know, may the force be with you. <laughs> saying about Ohio is it's very true. There's a lot of coal plants. It's all along the river. It's in the Miami Valley. And um, I've also read a lot of, not a lot of papers, but I read like a paper one time that described the, the sulfuric acid problem that comes from burning a lot of the coal that contains <coughs> sulfur. And a lot of the sulfuric acid and the acid rain stuff that happens down in like South America and stuff that they're having a lot of trouble with the rainforest comes directly from the Midwest. And I'm guessing um, like because of the air currents and things like that, it passes right over South America and dumps it right down. And so, I mean, this is not just, you know, Ohio's problem with pollution and stuff like that. It's it's a big problem. And it seems like it would be a good idea. It would be a good staging ground, you know, to take, because 90% of Ohio's power generation comes from coal. And that's, that's a lot of coal. I mean, it's not like we're doing, you know, 60, 40 or, 70 30 even it's it's 90 percent and the other 10 percent is i think we do have one nuclear plant and probably have a few tenths of a percent of some renewables uh, being from new jersey and appreciating your coal dust <laughs> delivered directly to our our home uh, should we be writing letters to your dean and your uh, of your department to say, hey. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that would definitely help. Um, we're, currently, I'm not going to be switching to the nuclear program, but that's just because I'm already so far in mind that it would be kind of, uh, I guess, like a waste of tuition to switch. But, um, but yeah, you, yeah, we could most like most definitely get a master's or something if we started a research program at UC. But I think the the main issue is that there. There is money to fund the nuclear program, but our university is very bureaucratic and it's very stingy they when it are. comes to that. So, you ask a question. So I think it's very great that you're trying to increase enrollment in nuclear engineering. Uh, but also, have you thought? Have you looked into trying to introduce a topic of engineering uh, within of nuclear engineering within other engineering majors, such as? discussing with faculty, setting up a, to set up an interdisciplinary energy course that discusses nuclear along with solar and wind and all the other renewables, or, um, you know, you've mentioned civil and mechanical and architecture. Um, have you talked to any of the professors in those departments um, to include nuclear um, in the conversation of energy and engineering in general? Uh, we did speak with the assistant dean about um, some of the nuclear uh, courses and stuff that are offered, and, and he was saying that they're going to kind of cut down on them. But um, I think what you're getting at is kind of what we're driving at as well: is that we're trying we're trying to look for a way to get people from you know cross disciplines in, in, interested in this. 
So we're looking for you know courses like that that could be offered. We can ask professors or the dean to offer, so that we can get just not not just you know the nuclears or maybe not just the civils or whoever is interested. Because at, at this point, it's it's more of a not necessarily a profession but like a hobby for some people and. And most of the people, I don't think, really recognize, most of the people in power, I should say, really don't recognize the importance of this technology. So I think it's, a lot of it's just right now trying to spread the awareness. And then if the importance is recognized through students being interested and, you know, being active, then they'll start to really respond to uh, that. So basically, we just need more leverage on it. Very good. Thank you.